how does HPV interact with the immune system? As we heard already this morning, hepatitis B um, in this, is this great model also in the sense that we can learn about the immune response and how the um, human body is able to clear the virus spontaneously in the majority of patients actually who uh, present with acute hepatitis in the adulthood. Um, only a few of them go on to viral persistence, but so principally it's possible that the immune system clears uh, the infection. Of course, the idea is to learn about about the relative role of these different components of the immune uh, response against hepatitis B to learn for the development of immune therapies. And many different cell subsets are, of course, involved in the immune response, and I will focus today primarily on the role of CD8 cells and NK cells. And why do we believe that NK CD8 T cells are so important? First, uh, over the years, several groups have shown that there's a clear correlation between the uh, immune response in um, acutely infected patients and um, viral clearance. In addition, so as you can see here, in addition, um, in the chimpanzee model, it has been shown that viral clearance coincides with the um, accumulation of T cells at the site of infection. And probably most important in that sense that when you deplete CD8 cells in animals that normally clear the virus within a few weeks, when you take away the CD8 T cells, the virus goes up and stays at highest titers for several weeks. It doesn't increase any further because at that point, 100% of hepatocytes are infected. And then first, when virus-specific CD8 T cells return in the blood and the liver, is the virus cleared. And when we go in more detail into the original data from that uh, animal, um, it's clear that when you deplete uh, the CD8 T cells, viral titer state at high levels, then there's a suboptimal restoration, so some restoration of CD8 T cells that are depleted, so they come up to about one third. It's associated with liver disease, and then you have almost something like a three months period where we do have suboptimal CD8 T cell <coughs> levels, ongoing liver disease, but no clearance. And then at a later time point is a search of the CD8 cells. It's associated with an increase in ALT and final, final elimination. And I think when you really look careful at this uh, slide from these and these two, two animals looked identical, it becomes kind of clear or it's, it's suggestive that if you want to achieve viral control in hepatitis B, that you at least need to have some kind of uh, liver disease, some kind of killing. And now to uh, look further into possible effector functions of HPV-specific CD8 T cells in collaboration with Stefan Orban, we use now the new cell culture models that are available, and we use these HPV-infected cells, and we do co-cultures with virus-specific CD8 T cells, either direct or separated by a transfer. And what we found is indeed that in a direct co-culture, when you add virus-specific CD8 T cells directly, there's a significant inhibition of viral replication in concert with an increase in AST levels. And also, as you can see uh, in, the micro in the microscope, that of course is um, cells uh, uh, die in this direct co-culture. However, when you then add this um, uh, transvel, uh, you see, uh, of course, no killing anymore because you need a direct cell-cell contact for killing, but still some antiviral effect, however, not such a dominant effect as you see in the direct co-culture versus the transvel, suggesting that virus-specific CD8 T cells have two different pathways to inhibit replication, but that the dominant one may be, um, and I think, again, it fits to uh, observations we have also from the clinic that normally flares precede a spontaneous viral clearance and a chronic infection um, is really an important uh, uh, role. But why do these CD8 T cells fail uh, so often in the chronic phase of infection? And I'd like to discuss uh, novel data with you regarding the role of uh, T cell exhaustion. So CD8 T cells are present in a chronic phase, but they do not function properly. And uh, we've learned about that over the years from many models that uh, a chronic, um, after chronic antigen stimulation, a virus-specific CD8 T cell is not looking like a memory effector cell, but rather like a short-lived, functionally exhausted cell, 
although recent data in mouse models have questioned the simple uh, scheme and have suggested that indeed even in the chronic phase of virus-specific CDAT cells um, are heterogeneous, for example, that there are indeed within exhausted cells memory-like cells that are, for example, defined by novel transcription factors, and I will come back to that in a moment. So, um, how does an exhausted CDAT cell look like? We've learned a lot about that, so this would be the scheme to summarize that. So the cells highly express and co-express inhibitory receptors. They highly express CD39, which is a novel marker for terminally exhausted cells. They do not express memory markers like CD127, and they do not function properly. Also, on the level on transcription, they are characterized by a high expression um, of EMIS. So the idea or the question we asked uh, was, how does now indeed virus-specific CDAT cells look like a in chronic infection? And we went into a cohort of uh, up to now 12 chronic HPV-infected patients with detectable CDAT cell responses, and we compared it to hepatitis C. And in order to really allow us a comprehensive analysis, we performed an um, enrichment, meaning because normally, um, just to show the, the bottom line, um, you're lucky in hepatitis B to find um, a proportion of uh, tetramer virus-specific CDAT cells as shown here. However, if you uh, perform this enrichment strategy by um, enriching these virus-specific CDAT cells, you can clearly see that this is now a significant population that can be used for further analysis. And when we did this, um, the first interesting finding for us was, so this is now tetramers of virus-specific CDAT cells are shown here, and this is PD-1 as an exhaustion marker, and we compare always HCV blue to um, HPV red. We found that, for example, the exhaustion marker PD-1 is significantly higher on HCV compared to HPV in this patient cohort. The same holds true for EMIS as shown in all the patients, and it also holds as specifically true for CD39 as a marker for terminal exhaustion, suggesting just from this data set that um, two different hepatotropic virus infections, HPV and HCV, show very different degrees of uh, T cell um, exhaustion. And indeed, when we look further at the marker of memories, for example, on CD27, so you see, again, virus-specific CDAT cells in the case of HCV. They're all PD-1 positive. However, a large fraction or a large fraction, most fraction, are negative for CD27, but there is another population of virus-specific CDAT cells targeting the same antigen that looks rather like a memory-like population because they're CD27 positive. And this is not the case in HPV, where the majority of HPV-specific CDAT cells that are PD-1 positive, but they are all, all seem to be positive for this uh, memory marker CD127, which is also shown here, a significant difference between HPV and HCV. So when we summarize this on a very simple scheme, that we have these kind of populations, and for time reasons I do not go into more detail, that these memory-like cells are also high on the transcription factor TCF1, um, they are low on CD39, so they're not really sharing other exhaustion markers in contrast to these uh, PD-1 positive CD-127 negative cells that um, do highly express uh, um, typical markers of uh, exhaustion. So the question really is why, we do, why do we have these terminally exhausted cells in HCV and why don't we find them in chronic HPV? And it's also interesting that a recent study uh, from Dietmar Seen, and we worked together on that, uh, suggested that TCF1 indeed is a marker which is shown high on HPV-specific CDAT cells that characterizes virus-specific CDAT cells that maintain an immune response in the chronic phase of infection. But coming back to the question, why do we have these terminally exhausted cells in hepatitis C and not in hepatitis uh, B? Um, we followed the um, uh, virus-specific T cell response first in the case of HCV, when you now treat with direct antiviral therapy. And indeed, as is summarized here, um, in a large cohort of patients, all cleared, all patients uh, showed this uh, phenotype as I just described prior treatment where we have this memory-like and this terminally exhausted population 
and after rapid viral clearance, this highly exhausted cells disappear, as is also depicted on this slide. So we have a loss of these highly exhausted cells, and after antigen clearance, these hepatitis C virus-specific CD8 T cells start to look like HPV-specific CD8 T cells. So they remain PD-1 high, however, they upregulate C227, this kind of memory marker. We would consider these cells memory-like cells. So um, if you now compare that to HPV, it would kind of suggest that maybe chronically HPV-infected CD8 T cells do not really recognize antigen anymore in the chronic phase of infection. And this is also reflected by the different levels um, of the expression mark of TCF1 that I showed you before. And importantly, as TCF1 has been suggested to be a memory marker and to be linked to proliferation, we found a clear correlation between the restoration proliferation, also by the expression of TCF1 and the uh, proliferation capacity. And as you can see, the black spots, HPV-specific CD8 T cells are also, um, all, all of them uh, nicely proliferate and highly express TCF1. So indeed, despite the chronic infection, these virus-specific CD8 T cells that are detectable, express memory markers, they do proliferate very nicely. And this is also interesting in the context of a very novel study, a recent study by the group of um, Rafi Ahmed, who in a mouse model defined CD8 T cells that provide the proliferative burst after PD-1 therapy. And in that study, he also showed that the best marker to define these cells is TCF1. So again, that within exhausted CD8 T cells, there are sub, there's a subset of cells characterized by TCF1 that nicely responds to PD-1. And this links it nicely to data, I think, from different groups, and we will hear later about PD-1, that when we, for example, compared PD-1 expression, or compared to different um, uh, checkpoint inhibitors for their antiviral efficiency in HPV, we found that PD-1 indeed was the best um, a blocker to increase proliferation of virus-specific CD8 T cells. And in that study, TCF1 was yet not defined. We could still link it to an intermediate phenotype in which now TCF1 fits perfectly and again uh, shows that HPV-specific CD8 T cells are not as terminally exhausted compared to um, uh, HCV-specific CD8 T cells. So that when you compare chronic HPV and HCV, in chronic HCV we have this terminally exhausted population present and it disappears after we uh, successfully eliminate the virus by DAA. In HPV, we have this rather less differentiated memory-like uh, phenotype. At this point, we don't really understand why we have this population despite the fact that there's so much antigen and uh, so much replication ongoing. And of course, since, uh, as I pointed out in the beginning, uh, the majority of our patients have been with low viral loads, we now um, um, increased our patient cohort with higher viral load, but still, and this is a slide I actually prepared for Marla Maini because she always asks the question when we uh, discuss this data, but nevertheless, it looks exactly the same. So a patient, and we have three now very similar patients, still, despite high viral load, um, HPV-specific CD8, uh, viral load, HPV viral loads show uh, these kind of uh, phenotypes. So it's uh, something I think we need to learn in the future why, um, these, uh, why we have this lack of terminally exhausted cells in HPV. In HCV, with a viral load like that, um, these cells are highly or uh, completely exhausted. So with this, I'd uh, like to talk for a few minutes in the second part um, on the role of NK cells and also on some novel findings we have on the role um, on NK cells. And uh, we know from a landmark study from Mario Mondelli a few years ago that NK cells have a functional economy, meaning that in chronic HPV, um, NK cells do not really produce cytokines and um, what we also showed in this first study, they are characterized by a high expression of NKG2C. And it was really not understood why this is the case. But now, interestingly, last year, um, two studies in different models, 
suggested that there are adaptive NK cells specifically when they're stimulated by CMV. And these cells do express NKG2C and they do not really suppress or produce cytokines compared to conventional NK cells. And also they um, suggested several markers that better define classical adaptive NK cells. And so the clear, simple question we asked was whether the altered NK cell function that we observed in chronically HPV-infected patients is maybe uh, just linked to the expansion of an adaptive NK cell subset. And uh, to address that, we followed patient, uh, 21 patient, and we performed a phenotypical analysis. And indeed, we observed that classical markers that have been suggested in these papers, for example, the downregulation of epsi, epsilon uh, gamma, um, that is significantly decreased in chronic HPV. However, that this is only detectable in patients who have um, also CMV infection, suggesting that CMV infection as known is driving adaptive NK cells, but in the case of HPV, we have a significant stronger expansion of um, uh, adaptive NK cells. And this holds true for all other markers that we looked at. For example, here, when you look at the downregulation of Helios, it's clear that the NK cells and chronic HPV infection are showing all the typical signs you would expect from adaptive NK cells. And again, it also holds true for the downregulation of PLSF2. So adaptive NK cells in HPV, high expansion of cells that do not express this transcription factor in contrast to conventional cells, as also shown here. And finally, when you look at function, as known, these cells do not really produce interferon gamma. So that explains why in chronic HPV, until today, we thought that uh, NK cells are dysfunctional. We believe it's due to the fact that we have an expansion of these adaptive NK cells. And as has been shown, that adaptive NK cells can react to a CD16 cross-linking. We did it, and then it, again, as expected, these NK cells produced um, cytokines. So that we would uh, conclude that the uh, mechanism behind the expansion <coughs> or the, the, the explanation for the finding that in chronic HPV and K cells do not produce cytokines is not due to alterations of NK cells, but it's rather due to the expansion of um, adaptive NK cells that increase from 30 to 70 percent um, in the fact when these patients um, are also CMV positive. The mechanisms behind it, the one obvious question would be maybe these patients with chronic HPV have um, maybe low-level CMV replication or more frequent reactivations in our patient cohort until today we could not uh, detect that. So I think that remains an important question. But I think the functional economy that has been described, which is increased cytotox cytotoxicity and decrease in the gamma production can be linked to this finding. So I think we have learned a few new things about the immune response in hepatitis B. Um, regarding CD8 T cells, it's interesting to see that uh, HPV-specific CD8 T cells do express PD-1. However, they're not highly exhausted, not as highly exhausted as you would expect them to be in the presence of ongoing replication, not as strong as compared to CMV, not as strong as compared to hepatitis C, but they um, rather look like memory-like cells expressing CD127. They're TCF1 high, and so they're really a promising target for PD-1 blockade. And we just followed one patient our, in our clinic who um, uh, was treated with PD-1 blockade for HCC and indeed um, successfully had a zero conversion. And indeed, this is linked to an emergence of virus-specific CD8 T cells. This is ongoing, but I think to learn more about the determinants, why do we have this not highly exhausted CD8 T cells present despite antigen, I think is an open question that we need to address in the near future. And regarding NK cells, um, we find in our patient cohorts indeed an expansion of adaptive NK cells. And again, the question behind is now, how can this be explained? And of course, uh, Mala Minus group has shown nice crosstalks between NK cells that are able to inhibit or elim eliminate CD8 T cells. And of course, now the question is whether maybe NK cells are even more strongly involved in that crosstalk. And also, this is uh, ongoing work. 
And with this, I'm, I'd like to end and uh, thank the people in the lab who did the work, um, especially uh, Michael Hofmann and Dominic Wieland, and um, also the um, collaboration effort. We have a new um, grant, which lasts normally for 12 years in SFB, together with the University of Heidelberg. It's led by, by um, Ralf Bartenschlager, but Stefan Orban is also part of that, and um, within the next 12 years, we hope to answer some of the questions I just pointed out. Thank you very much for your attention.